I'm a big fan of the NBA. I love basketball. Just wasn't as good at basketball as I was at football and baseball. Um, so I did get some opinions from some experts. But before I, you know, talk about that, I just want to, you know, and I've talked about my mental health in sports and what I went through. Uh, but I think it's important. So I like talking about it. So we're going to talk about it some more. And I want to talk about the Philadelphia 76ers point guard, Ben Simmons. So this 6'10", 260-pound specimen or whatever he is, is an athlete that not many people have seen. Uh, I mean, LeBron is close, but Ben Simmons is just, he's a little bit taller than LeBron. And uh, he has trouble shooting. Now, this isn't new to the Philadelphia 76ers. They had Markel Fultz years ago, who was a, I think it was a first overall pick. And he literally, his mental... It, he just could not shoot the ball like it, it would he just would not allow himself to shoot the ball and Ben Simmons is kind of in that same mode right now but Markel Fultz actually couldn't play they just stopped him from playing Ben Simmons is still playing he's just not willing to shoot the ball which is kind of weird if you think about the NBA you kind of got to shoot <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people are giving him grief if you watch the ESPYs you saw Please tell me you saw that, matter of fact. No, I didn't. So you know uh, the new Captain America, Ma uh, Captain America, the black Captain America? Mm -hmm. Yep. Or Falcon. Yeah. Or is it Anthony Mackey? I think that's his name. He hosted the ESPYs. <laughs> and he had two small children come up on stage. And they gave the humanitarian award to Ben Simmons. And... <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad <laughs> but they showed a video a little like it was like a montage of mm -hmm. him missing shots and he he got the humanitarian award because of all the houses that he built for for kids with all the bricks that he shot <laughs> <laughs> now as a fan and as someone watching that, <laughs> it's funny but i have firsthand experienced what he has experienced so or is experiencing right now and it for me like oh, it was funny but it just i was like man poor ben simmons now in, in my in my circumstance i wasn't getting paid the millions that he was and it's a little bit different so you can feel bad for him because having a having a mental block or a th thoughts that paralyze you from performing or being free to do things, it, it's rough. Now, I kind of want your perspective because, I mean, I know you play sports, but, I mean, I don't think you ever had, like, that issue. But looking at from the outside in, what is your thought on someone who literally their mind will not let them do something? <laughs> mind is a powerful thing, uh, either good or bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one way or the other. I. There were times I, I just remember growing up playing baseball where, you know, and it's called a slump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, sure, and it's sure, a real sure. thing. Yeah. You know, you go up there and it's like, I, I haven't, I haven't even hit a foul ball in three games or, you know what I mean? Like, I just yeah. can't put the bat on the ball. And that's oh. the way you're thinking. Yeah. And th exactly. Because once it starts happening, then it's, well, what's wrong? And you overthink it. Oh, yeah. I do it in golf all the time. It's. Oh, that is the prime. It, it is because, you know, sport. you go up there and. I swear, it's usually like the first or second hole. I'm just not really thinking much. I'm just swinging. Yeah. And I'll hit a nice shot. I'm like, man, that was cool. <laughs> and then I'm like, well, how'd I do it? Yeah. What did I, where were my feet? How, how much did I bend my knees? Did I bend my elbow? Like, did I keep every, and then the next shot's horrible. <laughs> horrible. Because I'm thinking too much. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I mean, I'm terrible at just getting off. This is the same topic, but. <laughs> okay. Did you see Charles Barkley's new swing? No. So, uh -huh. you know, he was good once upon a time. <laughs> yeah. And then he got basically exactly what we're saying, messed up in the head. And he worked with, um, uh, I think, a, a golf specialist who gives lessons. And now he's 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 not like 100 percent like 1990 Charles Barkley golfing, but he's he can compete and he hits shots the way he's supposed to hit now. And he's <laughs> not like. <laughs> I know you've seen the YouTube videos of him swinging. Have you seen? Oh my gosh. No, I th I've seen some clips though. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's bad. But now he's, I watched a video and it, it just felt good because I'm like, ah, I, there was times where you feel like you, 
all right, I'm, I'm out of this. I'm out of this slump, as you know, you mm. would say, or I'm out of this mind frame. I'm free again. I'm out here competing because that's what I would, I would see these guys who, I mean, this sounds bad, but they weren't as physically uh, talented as me, but they were just out there performing and not worrying about it, all the things I was worried about. And it just sucked. <laughs> it sucked. It, I'm, I'm, you know, this stuff happens to, and I don't know. I mean, if you don't watch sports consistently, you may not notice these things, but I mean, how many times do you hear about a golfer with a new swing or a tweaked swing? Well, that's because he was in his head. You know, if, if he was doing everything fine with the swing he had, he wouldn't have changed it. True, true, how, true. I have never seen an NBA player in my life have more different foul shot routines than LeBron James. <laughs> Arguably the greatest glad basketball you, player. I'm glad you brought this up. At, at least of our, you know, yeah. generation and, and maybe ever. But the dude, I, every game I'm like, I remember, especially when he was with the Cavs, because I'd watch almost every game. It's oh, like, yeah. oh, that's different. <laughs> Next night, that's a little different. It's because he wasn't very good at free throw. She, he was always trying to change it up. Yeah. And that's just, it's weird to be able to shoot threes and not step in yep. 10 feet and shoot a free throw. <laughs> but I, I get it. I mean, the person that holds the record, I think, for free throws is some old man. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, you don't need to be – he's just being able to repeat, you yep. know, the same movement. So, um, but I, I also talked to Micah about this because, obviously, he's a basketball coach at the college, collegiate yep. level. And his explanation was very simple. Now, I don't know if he's experienced this, but – he basically said it can't, it comes down to two things. Confidence. Cause for me in high school, I always felt confident once I completed a pass or, you know, got my first out or made my first basket. Then I was like, all right, I'm good. But that's not where confidence comes from. And I've heard this from rest in peace, Roy Halliday with the Phillies, um, where confidence comes from preparation. If you prepare to the max, which makes sense because Coach Schiff prepared us in football and I would be confident going into the game because I knew the defenses they would run. I knew our plays like the back of my hand because we were running them since we were in middle school. <laughs> and that just contributes so well. But it started to make sense when you, you know, you see boxers or tennis players, individual sports, they know what they, the work they've put in. So they come in confident, except people who fought Mike Tyson. No one was, <laughs> no one was confident against him. But... Yeah, Micah said, you know, he was, I heard it again from him, and it makes sense. You know, confidence comes from preparation. And what he said, he added, what you think about all day. Mm -hmm. So I know as a pitcher, when I was starting, you know, you don't have to get to the field at the same time as everybody else does. So you kind of – you have the whole day to think about it. And I wouldn't get to the field until 4 o'clock when the game was at 7, which could be a good thing and a bad thing. You obviously want to rest, but if you're just sitting in your bed thinking all these terrible thoughts <laughs> – <laughs> about man i gotta i gotta i gotta have these numbers this game so i can move up i gotta provide for my family you know i gotta i gotta you know make a name for myself i gotta help uh, put tuscross county on the map i gotta show that you know people can come out of dover i gotta show for these kids growing up like percy came from dover and he made it to the professional level i can do it too so I've, i'm putting all this weight on myself and it just it sucked, man. I was going to Subway. Like <laughs> you tell this story all the time. Yes, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> just with the numbers on my forehead and the person at Subway. I just spit everywhere. The person at Subway knows my stat line from the mm -hmm. previous game. That's that's not true. No one cares. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's I forget what that's called. Um, that I, I remember. I remember that term. I have a term. Is it imposter syndrome? No. No, no, it's, it's the, it's uh, something in psychology where you, since you live life through your lens uh, and your body, everything's happening to you, you know what I mean? So yeah. you think it, it was one of those things where it's like, okay, I got a zit on my nose. So I walk in, oh, I'm walking down the hallway, <laughs> walking down the hallway of high school or whatever. And it's like, everybody's looking at my zit. But in reality, they all have their own zits. Yeah. They're not worried about mine. They're worried about their stuff. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. That, that has a lot to do with it, too, where we just think that, oh, man, I screwed up. Everybody's looking at me or I have this problem or this issue. Yeah. Everybody's thinking about me. No, they've got their own problems. They're, they're not worried about, about you like you are. Yeah. And speaking of zits, 
on your nose every homecoming i had a big zit on my nose so i thought you were bringing oh, that no, up. i mean come on now i could have been talking about myself i mean <laughs> one guy didn't yeah but mine were big <laughs> I, was just, I either had a sty or is it one of the two Jeez. yeah it was bad but i think <laughs> i think that stuff is very important to know because i you know our last one of our last guests mitch with velocity baseball training, he talks about yeah. that too. We obviously we had the same issues, but he talks about the kids that he's he's working with, where parents don't really think about that, or a dad might not think that that's an issue, and they're like, "Well, why can't you just do it?" Mm-hmm. And you know, it's it's you know when you're outside looking in, it's just a little bit different. Why can't Ben Simmons just shoot the ball? <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, you there was one clip where he literally looked like he had a wide open dunk and he passed it. Mm. That's totally Cause, in his head. Because he was afraid to get fouled. He thought so, there was no one near him, but he thought someone was behind him that mm-hmm. he was going to get fouled. And he didn't want to go shoot the foul shot because, you know, everybody's looking at When you're literally at the foul line, everyone's looking at you. <laughs> There's no hiding. I mean, yeah. but then you go to the opposite spectrum. If you're watching the finals right now, Giannis and, and Tatakupo. <laughs> <laughs> Antenna Kupo. Yeah. Antenna Kupo. Antenna. I used to know how to say his name pretty well. I'm going to say Ante Tecupo, whatever that is. But <laughs> Giannis, Giannis, just Giannis. Just Giannis, the Greek freak. Yeah. He is someone I look at and just – there. you don't really hear analysts like ranting and raving about someone's mental toughness when it comes to shooting free throws and stuff like that. That's how you know that Giannis is showing a different side and he's showing the confidence because the first two games he shot bad – I mean, he had a whole bunch of points in those first two games in the NBA Finals, but, you know, everyone's counting out mm-hmm. his free throws in the whole arena. 20,000 people are counting them down. And, Dude, you know, that is he, whole. I mean, I, as, a, as a fan, spectator from yeah. home laying in bed, I'm like, this is hilarious. The, the whole crowd. Woo. Then he airballs it. <laughs> you know, this guy, this guy's a two-time MVP, and he's standing however far, 15 feet away from the rim, and he's airballing the ball. Mm-hmm. And the ball literally is like a Fisher-Price ball in his hands. Well, yeah, and his arms have to be, what, five feet long <laughs> already? Yes. I mean, the dude is, yeah. yeah. And the the thing about, I admire about him is he's not shying away from the free throw line. I, don't, I, I airballed it. Oh, well. Mm-hmm. He has perspective. He was talking about his son. He was talking about, you know, his family in Greece. He, he used to, you know, have to struggle to help his family put food on the table. So the perspective he has is just uh, in an, in another world, and he's just able to, you know, hey, he even made a comment that if his son asked him to retire today, he would. Really? If his son said, Dad, I want to spend more time with you, when are you going to retire from ba- basketball? He said, I would retire then. All right, so he's got he's got his priorities yes. as far as, you know, in my opinion. Well, he's now got he's already made pro- his money. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, sure, I can retire. But yeah, no big deal. Um, but that it's, I, I admire that in Giannis. So, because, you know. well, and right there, so you're talking about Giannis and you're talking about Ben Simmons and I, there's, I'm not going to sit here and say neither one of them, I, I, they both prepare. Yeah. You know what I mean? For the game. So when, whenever it's like, how do you fix some of these problems when it's in the head? I mean, we're human beings. So what works for you is not going to work for me. Vice versa is not going to work for my wife. It's not going to work for the guy listening mm-hmm. to the show. I mean, you know, you got to find what works for you. Mm-hmm. And that's where it really helps to have friends and, and good family members and people in your life that, you know, you trust and who understand you and can help you figure out what works for you. Support system. Yeah. Very important. Yep. Yeah, and it sounds like Giannis has got a great one. I mean, <laughs> his brother's on the team and he, they always talk about his <laughs> brother being the biggest hype man ever. So it's so nice to see them. Even Giannis, have you, did you see his leg injury? No. He hyperextended the other way. Oh, really? Yeah, that was before the finals. They didn't think he was going to play. Now he's having Oh, yeah, no, I did. Yeah, I did. Yep. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's a thing that people don't it, – it goes back to saying, you know, hey, athletes are human too. I know they make a lot of money in their, in their entertainment business, and you kind of don't look at them the same as the average Joe who, you know, works at a company and works in an office – you know, I th- I think it's it's the same thing. They're held obviously they make more money, but they're held to the same standard. Mm-hmm. The person in the office has to perform every day. The person at the it's it's just the argument that I don't really want to have right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, uh 